All right, so next thing we're going to talk about is the number line and interval notation. You're like, what notation? Interval notation. It's like if you're a runner and you do interval training or any other sport and you do interval training. Anyway, so let's talk about the number line, interval notation, and this is also going to relate to inequalities, but inequalities should not be something that is new to you. Uh, actually, all of this should not be new to you, but we'll still talk about it. So... Inequality. That's what these are. Those are inequalities. Why are they inequalities? Well, because they don't have equal signs. Even though some of them could be equal to, because here we have a less than or equal to, and here's another less than or equal to, uh, they are not equations, but they still give a relationship between, uh, or I'm sorry, a relationship for a set of numbers, basically. Um, so now let's talk about interval notation. So interval notation is a different way to write an inequality, but it provides the same information. So here we would read this as x is greater than 3. So what is that saying? That's saying that x is all of the real numbers larger than 3, or x is potentially all of the real numbers larger than 3, or x is the set of real numbers larger than 3. So how can we write that as an inequality? Well, we're going to start with 3 and a parenthesis. So I'm going to do parenthesis 3, comma, infinity, and then parenthesis. So now, let's talk about this. Well, when we're writing interval notation, the number on the left should always be lower than or less than the number on the right. The comma is telling us everything in between. The parenthesis is telling us that we are not actually including this number, that's this parenthesis, and the parenthesis here is telling us that we are not actually including infinity. Uh, we never include infinity because it's not an actual value. Um, again, also on your note packet is this information, but I'm going to explain it in person. By in person, I mean via video. So that's what we're doing right now. So that would be the interval notation for x is greater than 3. What about x is less than or equal to negative 1? So the interval notation for this, since now negative 1 is the largest possible value that x can be, so that's going to be on the right-hand side, and then it's going to be, we're going to include every value to the left of that. So that's going to be negative infinity, comma, negative 1. And I'm going to have a parenthesis with the negative infinity and a bracket with the negative 1 because the bracket is telling me that I am actually including negative 1 within my interval. Alright, and then again here, negative infinity is less than negative 1, so this is the lower number, comma means everything in between, and then negative 1. Last one here, interval notation. This is going to be negative 1, comma, 3, parenthesis. So bracket on the negative 1, 3 with a parenthesis because we are including the negative 1. We are not including the 3, and x is everything in between there. So now we want to graph these on the number line. Well, you've done this before. You probably started doing this in maybe 6th or 7th grade. Uh, the only thing we're going to change now is in the past, you might have used an open circle to say you're including the number and a closed circle to say, I'm sorry, an open circle to say you are not including the number and a closed circle to say you are including the number. Well, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to use our interval notation uh, symbol, so we're going to use parentheses and brackets. So to graph A, I'm going to put parentheses at 3, and then I'm going to shade to the right. To graph B, I'm going to put a bracket at negative 1, and then shade to the left, and then to graph C, I'm going to put a bracket at negative 1, a parenthesis at 3, that's a parenthesis, and we're going to shade in between. Good stuff. So that is our interval notation from inequalities, and then graph. The last thing we're going to talk about is verbally describing these. So what does that mean? That means use your words or put it into words. So how do I verbally describe x is greater than 3? Well, didn't I just do it by saying x is greater than 3? Not exactly. When we verbally describe this, we, we don't want to really use the variable. Uh, by really, I mean we don't want to use the variable. We want to describe what is this actually representing. So x is greater than 3 is saying... The 
set of all real numbers greater than, or you could say larger than, three. Uh, for B, we would say the set of all real numbers less than or equal to negative one. And this may seem kind of tedious to you, like well, why do I need to do this? Well. It's really important when you're trying to learn something, and this is true for any topic, uh, to be able to write it out. Um, the reason why that's helpful is it, it actually gives you a better understanding that when we say x is greater than 3, well, what does that mean? It means we're talking about real numbers, first of all, and we're talking about all of them that are larger than 3. Uh, we're using the word set because it is a group of all those numbers. Um, that's an infinite amount of numbers, so we can't actually list it, but it's important to understand it. Uh, and so then the last one, we would say, whoops, Uh, you could say something along the lines of the set of all real numbers between negative 1 and 3, including negative 1, but not including 3. Um, there are a few other ways to, to phrase that, but again, we're not using the word, we're not using the variable x. We're just talking about that it's, x is representing the set of all real numbers. The set of all real numbers where? Well, in this case, between negative 1 and 3, including negative 1, but not 3. Okay, so then here I want you to try this one on your own. So you have the inequality 1 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 5. So I want you to write this in interval notation, graph it on the number line, and then verbally describe it. So pause the video, do that, unpause when you're ready to check your work. Okay, so our interval notation should look like this, parenthesis 1, 5 bracket. Our graph should look exactly like the interval notation, but instead of a comma, we shade in between. And then our verbal description could be something along the lines of the set of all real numbers between 1 and 5, including 5, but not 1. Okay, so you might be asking yourself again, what's the point of this? I know how to write inequalities. I've been doing that for a while. I've been graphing things on the number line before. Great, now you're making me use a parenthesis instead of an open circle and a bracket instead of a closed circle. Um, and verbal description, I feel like I'm just writing stuff down, and I don't know why I'm doing that in math class. Well, again, uh, the point of the verbal description is to be able to put math into words. Uh, that's actually more important than you might think. Um, it's one thing to be able to, you know, follow some steps and get an answer, but if you don't know what that answer means, then it's really not very useful to anybody. Um, and then with the interval notation, this is going to be something that's going to come up throughout the entire year. Um, in various topics, so you are going to want to be very comfortable with interval notation, and you're going to want to be comfortable uh, for at least this unit and further on, being able to go back and forth between a graph, the interval notation, and the inequality. So all of these examples here, I gave you the inequality and you wrote the interval notation in the graph, but you, if I give you the graph, you want to be able to write the interval notation and, and the inequality, or if I give you the interval notation, write the graph and the inequality, and so on.